Welcome everybody to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. If you're new to the channel, my name is David and I fish inshore and offshore, giving you my tips and techniques as we find and catch fish. So take a moment and hit that subscribe button. If you're a returning viewer, I'd appreciate it you hit that subscribe button as well. That goes a long way in helping me to continue to bring you these videos. So what we're going to do today is we're in about 70, 80 feet of water. And we've got some options today. We could catch a trigger fish, we could catch kingfish, probably some vermilion snappers out here. So our options are open. So what we're gonna do, we're on a nice looking reef right now. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't target our keeper trigger fish first thing this morning. All right, so what I'm gonna start out with is this chicken rig. And I'm gonna use just a little piece of squid on each of my two hooks. So this is a four alt circle hook. I may have to go down a little bit to a smaller hook if we're getting a lot of, um, you know, where they're still in our bait. But I'm just going to put just a little bit on the end there. Trigger fish have real small mouths, and you need to kind of have a small hook and, and a small piece of bait just so you can have a better chance of hooking them. All right, now what this is, this is just a standard chicken rig. This is a four ounce weight at the bottom. This is 40 pound mono that made up this chicken rig and like i said this is a four alt circle hook coming up to another four alt circle hook and to a black barrel swivel at the top all right so i'm just going to drop this down to the bottom first off and see if i get any bites if not i'll kind of slowly work it to the surface until i hopefully get some bites oh got him y'all got him all right now i saw a dolphin earlier oh this is got some good weight to him Definitely got some good weight to them. Oh, it's our trigger. Wow. This was really our second drop. The first one got stolen. I believe he's going to be our keeper, y'all. They got to be 15 inches from the nose to the fork of the tail. So let's get him off and see. All right, so no keeper. He was about 14, so about an inch short. But that was good. That was our second drop, y'all, and we got us a trigger fish. Let's go ahead and get him back down. Now I'm gonna change these circle hooks. This is a four alt, and this is a smaller, just a little bit smaller three alt, especially thinner wire. Um, those trigger fish are really starting to steal my bait. Um, so the good thing about this chicken rig is you can easily change hooks as well as your weight at the bottom. You just have to kind of slide this loop off, take that old hook off, and then get the new one on by just sliding it through the eye and looping it up under the hook. And there you go. That's just a super easy way to be able to change your hooks. Oh, oh, there we go, y'all. Oh, man. Oh, man. He's got a little more weight to him. I did see a dolphin a few minutes ago, and I'm a little worried that we're going to get a, some tracks from dolphin trying to catch our fish. Man, this has got a little more weight than that last one. That's for sure. Let's see what we've got here. That's a trigger fish. Let's see if he... Looks like they're getting a little bigger. He might just make... Let's see. I was right, he's a little bigger, but just by a half an inch, he's only 14 and a half. So we'll go ahead and get him back. There you go, dude. Oh, here he is, y'all. Wow. Okay. Here's a much bigger one. All right. At least it feels like it. Man, all right. Man, he just kind of came and attacked this one. I wasn't even on the bottom yet, so hopefully that's a bigger one. Sometimes these bigger ones will kind of stay towards the top. You know, I don't think he's going to be a keeper or any bigger than the ones we've got, but he's was feisty, that's for sure. Yeah, he was just 14. There you go, dude. All right, y'all. Man, I'm getting a trigger fish about every drop now. I don't think he's going to be a keeper, but let's pull him up just to see. Had a little second wind here. Come on, trigger. Come on, trigger. They're not little, y'all. They're just not quite keeper sized. I don't know. This one might just make it. See where this hook was. See, it was just barely 
the top of his mouth. And you can see just how small their mouths are. That's why you need a small hook. He is that much short of 15, y'all. Quarter of an inch, maybe. But too short nonetheless. There you go, buddy. There we go, y'all. Okay. Man. All right. Ooh, this is a good one, y'all. This is a good one. Straight on the bottom. Right when this bait hit the bottom, it was here. I don't know if this is a trigger fish, y'all, because this has got some good weight to it. If it is, it could well be our keeper. Oh, it is a trigger, y'all. Let's see. All right. Let's see if this is our keeper or not. I think we may have our keeper, y'all. Yes, y'all. We got our keeper. Check him out. He's 15 and a half. We got our keeper trigger fish, y'all. 15 and a half. They got to be 15 here in the state of Florida. And you get to keep one per person. So here at 924 in the morning, I've limited out on my trigger fish. Let's get him in the box. We got our keeper trigger fish. I'm not going to really try to fish for them too much longer but before we decided to do something else i've got this one ounce spro jig i'm just curious i just kind of want to give this a try and see oh here he is y'all oh he was on it when i was just starting to kind of reel it in i think he had probably grabbed it when it was when i was just letting it sink and then when i flipped the bell closed he got in he got hooked all right y'all I have no earthly idea what this is. None. Almaco? It's either an Almaco or a little jack. A little amberjack. I think it's an amberjack. Yep. Yeah, that's an amberjack, y'all. A little amberjack on the jig. Check them out. All right, y'all, this is an amberjack. A video or two ago, I caught a lot of Almacos and kind of showed the difference. You can kind of see with the amberjacks, they're a lot more slender. And this dorsal fin up here, see it's not as tall in relation to their body as that Almaco was. So these are nice little amberjack, fun to catch. I'm gonna go ahead and get him back, back in the water. All right, so we moved out about six or eight more miles. We're in a little over 90 feet of water now on a different reef. So what I'm gonna do just to kind of see what's down here, I'm gonna put this chicken rig back out there with some squid and I changed my hooks to a little bit bigger to four out hooks. Oh, oh here he is y'all. Ah, not a monster or anything but fish right off the bat. Yep there he is. I, oh no he's got a little weight to him. He kind of just jerked it out of my hand. I thought the squid had gotten eaten on the way down because I wasn't getting any bites. Oh it's a red snapper. No vermilion snapper. All right. Well you know I like these things y'all. All right, so this is a little vermilion snapper, y'all. They've got to be 10 inches here in the state of Florida, and you get to keep 10 of them. So these are nice eating fish. I'm going to go ahead and get him in the box. Yep. There we go, y'all. All right, got him. Wow. Oh, a little bit bigger pull here. These are scrappy little fish for their size. That's a red snapper. Nope, a big vermilion. Wow, look at this, y'all. All right, another nice vermilion, y'all. These are also called bee liners, but this is a nice one right here. Let me get a measurement on them. It's a total length. So he's at 16. So they've got to be 10 and he's 16. So he's going to go in the box. Oh, oh, got him again, y'all. Got him again. All right, let's see what we got. All right, look at these. Look at these vermilions, y'all. Here we go, y'all. Got him. All right. Man, this is just pitch and catch these vermilions, y'all. I'm loving it. I'm just going to keep keep at this till this dies off. These are great eating. Another nice vermilion. Man, not even a red snapper mixed in there. There we go. All right. Another beeliner, y'all. I'm loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. This vermilion after vermilion after vermilion, y'all. Number eight, y'all. 
All right. Look at this young man. Look at that. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is gonna be number nine, B-liner. Number nine. All right, got him, y'all. All right. Let's see if this is our 10th B-liner. I moved a reef, so I was having a hard time staying on that other reef, so just kind of hopped on over to a different reef and oh it's a trigger fish well we already got our keeper plus he wouldn't be a keeper anyway showing a lot of good marks on the depth finder none of those look really big but you know we're trying to get this tenth vermilion anyway so you'd think there's got to be some vermilions mixed in all that somewhere oh here he is y'all no all right yep he's still here doesn't feel like there's much to it. Oh, our B-liner! All right, y'all. We have officially limited out on B-liners. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. He wasn't our biggest one in the box, but he makes number 10, and we limited out on B-liners today. All right, y'all. Limited out on our B-liners today. So it's about time for lunch. So I'm going to sit down here in the shade got the hatch open some breeze going got myself a cold coke and today's special is a meatloaf sandwich a day like this you can't go wrong with a sandwich like that sort of the poor man's meatball sub can't wait to dive into it we're gonna eat this up we'll see you back out on the deck and see what else we can't catch all right I'm gonna do something a little different here I'm gonna put out this 80 gram vertical jig and just see if we can pull up some of those triggers or vermilions or maybe this will track something else down there just for fun to do something a little different here at the end of the day oh oh got him y'all got him oh got him got him got him got him on the jig boy let's see what this is i have no idea what's going to hit this thing let's see what it is wow came up and just snatched it from me a trigger fish is this a bigger trigger fish wow yep he would have been another keeper just barely but he would have been keeper number two if we could keep two of them there you go oh got him again y'all got him again let's see what it is let's see what it is another trigger a beeliner beeliner on the jig well, squid was effective today, as well as this 80 gram vertical jig. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. You know, we had a good day today, got our two limits, got a limit on that trigger fish and the limit on the B liner. So it was kind of good to get out there and use squid to catch them, as well as, you know, towards the end of the day, we use those jigs to get them. But I'm gonna get the boat cleaned up and we'll see you back at the house. so we're going to go ahead and start off cleaning this trigger fish here so trigger fish have a tough skin and a big head so you kind of have to kind of a, account for that when you do your cut because most of this is guts right here so instead of just kind of sawing at this skin this is you know like leather kind of thing so what i tend to kind of do i kind of feel where those kind of guts are going to be and i just kind of do a little slit kind of like when you're scoring your fish you can kind of come down this way that beats kind of sawing at it and then kind of feel where the head is we're going to kind of come up this way follow the head shape there we go now you're just going to kind of do this typically like any kind of fish just be careful this skin is stuff and you don't want to force your knife end up cutting your hand then just like any kind of fish you're just going to kind of follow along that spine till your knife gets to the backbone and now do the underside cut and just go to the backbone just like you did on the top then go ahead and stick your knife all the way through and you can go ahead and 
remove that to the tail. Now you're just going to have to kind of work through this till you get to these rib bones here. Now you'll come to some smaller ones right here. You're really just going to have to kind of go through them. There you go, like that. Then you just kind of clean this up a little bit, get all this excess tissue that connects to the fin off. Kind of clean up any of this membrane here that you have. You can go ahead and get the fillet off the skin. Now you've seen me do this before. I like to get my fillet close to the board, to the edge of the board. And then once I get my knife going, then I can just follow my left hand behind it. That keeps the fillet and skin pressed firmly on the table, but also I can kind of feel how I'm doing by how much skin is left or how much meat is left. Just kind of clean out any of these bones. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this vermilion snapper. Now, you could do this like a lot of the saltwater fish where you cut the head and then run your knife down the back, you know, to release the skin from the fillet and then work the fillet off, pull it up and go over the rib bones. You can certainly do that because they do have some rib bones that are attached to the flesh. But these are not so big that you can't just clean it kind of like a speckled trout. Um, and I'll show you how, how you can do that. It's just a little bit easier. So I go ahead and cut the head, then I go ahead and cut to the anus right there. Then go ahead and get your knife, kind of work it down to the backbone, and just go ahead and just follow the backbone all the way to the tail. Now there were some bones I had to go through, but they're minimal. You know, in these sized fish, they're, they're not that tough to cut through. So then you can just go ahead and clean your rib cage area out. Then you can go ahead and remove the flesh from the skin. There again, just like the most fish I do, I follow along with my left hand. And then these are going to have some bones till about right here. So what I do is I just go along just the middle of that fish and then just kind of create a little V right there. And that's going to cut out all those bones. And that is literally it. And that's how easy it is to clean these vermilion snappers. So to clean the other side, we're just going to do the same process. Go ahead and find where the head ends. Now, I don't know if you can see it on this, but these snappers, they've got kind of their head kind of is a funny shape. It kind of comes up like this and then has a little um, kind of juts out right here. So that's the part you're going to have to kind of watch out for. See right there? Then you can go right up under that and then cut down to the backbone. Get your knife laying on the backbone, keeping it flat to the board, and go all the way through the tail. And then just like the other side, go ahead and cut your rib cage area out. Get your fillet close to the edge of the board. And just follow along. There you go. Very simple and very fast to clean these vermilions. And these bones, yep, going to go to about right there. There you go. Two nice vermilion fillets. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and cook that fish up that we caught today. I probably have the easiest, most simplest recipe that you could have for fish. I came up with this recipe many years ago. And my goal was to create a recipe that didn't have a lot of dishes to clean up and it was fast and, and more importantly just really easy to prepare. After a long day of fishing or just on a week night, if you've got some fresh fish or even some fish you pulled out of a freezer, this is a, just a really simple easy recipe for fish and it's very tasty. So first off, just to go over our ingredients, it's just going to take a couple spices, your paprika, Italian seasoning, um, this cavender seasoning, you could replace um, what we use this for with just some salt and pepper if you don't have this. Um, and we got some lemon juice, of course fresh lemon would be fine too. And this is kind of a, um, a dry white wine. Um, some garlic, you could use fresh if you wanted to. And then a stick of butter. 
All right, so our first step is go ahead and get the oven preheated to 425. And I've taken that stick of butter and I've just cubed it into smaller pieces. And I'm just gonna stick this in the oven and let that melt. And while that's in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and just season my fish. I've already rinsed it off and patted it dry. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Cavenders. Now this is just kind of a salt pepper substitute. Like I said, if you don't have this laying around, you can certainly use um, just regular salt and pepper, but it does have a few more spices in it, which just kind of adds a little depth of flavor. Okay, it's been about five or so minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this dish out. And now that our butter's nice and melted, we're gonna go ahead and start to add our ingredients. Now this recipe uses this dish and this dish only, which was one of the great things about this recipe. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and add about three or four um, cloves of garlic. So that was one, two, three, and we'll do a little four. That's about right. I never really measure anything, but I've, I kind of measured this out for this recipe, and that's about how much we like to use. Go ahead and stir that up. That'll go ahead and get the garlic cooking a little bit and get this butter nice and infused with that garlic flavor. Next, we're going to go ahead and start to add our spices. So first off with this Italian seasoning, we're going to put probably about um, a half teaspoon in here or so. I kind of eyeball it. I'm not going to get super particular with it. And then we're going to go ahead and add paprika, usually about half of what you just added for the Italian seasoning. So about an eighth of a teaspoon, something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and stir that up a little bit, get those spices in that hot butter, as well as that garlic. It's looking good. All right, and next we're going to go ahead and add a little lemon juice. So this is going to be probably about two tablespoons. That's one, two, something like that. Then next, we're gonna go ahead and add this white wine. You can use whatever kind of wine you want. This is kind of what I have on hand for cooking. It's kind of a dry wine. I don't like too sweet in this, but we're gonna add about half as much of lemon juice. So, you know, maybe a tablespoon or so, about like that, not too much. That's just gonna give it a little depth of flavor and that'll cook out as it, as it cooks in the oven. So get that all nice and stirred up. And those are all your ingredients. So now you can go ahead and put the fish in. Now this was the bottom side of the fish. So what we want to do, we want to put the serving side up. Now what this is, this is the trigger fish right here. And this is one of the bigger vermilions right here. So we've got that all nice and in there. And what I like to do is go ahead and just get some of that goodness on top. Go ahead and get that basted really nicely. Get some of the garlic on it. Some of those spices. There we go. Looking good. All right, now what I like to do is just put a little coating of these spices on top. Not much, just a little bit. And I like to do this paprika on top as well because we're gonna broil this at the end and this little dark color on the top is just going to make it really nice looking as a final product. And there you go. That's essentially all you need to do to prepare this fish for the oven. So we're going to go ahead and get this in the oven. And we're going to let this sit in there at 425 for about 15 minutes. And then after this cooks for 15 minutes on a regular baking setting, we're going to turn the broiler on without taking the fish out. Just go ahead and stick the broiler on and do that for about five minutes just to get that top a little bit crispy before we pull it out. All right, so after the initial 15 minutes was over from the regular baking setting, I just moved this up to a high broil, which was 525 degrees on this oven and just let that go for about five minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and see what it looks like. And 
And there you go, there's our final product. So what I like to do is I go ahead and get some of this sauce back on the top here. Just kind of baste it right here at the end. That'll grab some of that garlic up. Some of your spices, obviously the butter and the lemon and the wine. Now you could also, if you have some capers in your refrigerator, you could throw some capers in here when you, when you add the uh, original uh, set of ingredients. And that makes it really nice too. So there you go. Now this is basically a lemon butter garlic type of fish. You know, kind of same sort of ingredients that you would use if you were cooking this in a pan. It's just done in one dish in the oven, real simple, real easy, real quick, and very minimal cleanup. That's really nice, y'all. You can taste all the balance of those ingredients. That Italian seasoning in there, the paprika, of course your garlic and your butter. And I think that wine just adds a little bit of depth of flavor to it. So I hope you can try this recipe when you get a chance. Like I said, it's simple and easy. I'll leave this down in the comments below so you can make it yourself. So if you enjoy this kind of video where I give you on the water action, as well as give you my tips and tricks as I get out there and find and catch fish, I would certainly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment and hit that thumbs button. It would surely help me out and I appreciate you so much. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.